this um, Sunday's game, obviously, Talanoa had a great game around the line of scrimmage. How was he on the back end and, and the coverage stuff? Uh, I think Huff had a really good game for us. I mean, he, he flew around. He played with the type of energy, the tenacity, the grit that you would hope for. Like, uh, you, he stuck out amongst the entire group, just his style of play. And very happy for the way he played, the style of play which he played with. Right, We just got to have all 10 guys playing like that. I think Huff did a really good job, and he's only going to continue to get better. So very happy with what he did for us in that game. Nico, do you recall your reaction when you first heard Russell Wilson was no longer going to be in the NFC West? I mean, just everybody, just probably similar to everyone's reaction. It was just, you know, shocking. You see a guy who's been with the team for so long and has had so much success there in Seattle. So it's just, it's a little weird, like seeing him Monday night, seeing him in a different jersey. It is a little weird, but, uh, you know, I think everybody had that same kind of reaction. So nothing, nothing different there for me as well. I wouldn't say happy. I mean, it's, I mean, it happens all the time. For me, been in the league for a long time, so guys change team, guys move to different places. So for me, it's, you know, whoever we play really doesn't matter. Russell leaves the NFC West and we still have to play against him. So it's really not that big a deal for us. The way Gino opened up Monday night's game by completing almost every one of his first half passes, does that? Was that a good wake-up call for your guys going, look, this is we got to be on point with this guy now that he's taken over? Yeah, and that's just with everybody we play. I mean, Geno was successful. Yeah, I think they, they set it up for him where he can make some, you know, quick reads. He get the, he gets the ball out on time, does a good job of going through his progressions. He's a he's a veteran quarterback who's done it for a while. So we have we have, you know, high respect for Geno and what he can do with that offense and the way they you know, they play, they play the game the right way. They run the ball well. They play good defense, good special teams, and they surround, they surround Gino with good players. So, you know, we have to do our part on Sunday. You know, we have to finish. That's one thing we didn't do this past Sunday. We didn't finish, right? We had, had opportunities to close that game out, and defensively we didn't get the job done. So, for us, you know, the thing coming in is how much better can we play how can we help support our team and put us in position to win the game? How did you see what Javon Kinlaw did the other day? Yeah, and Kinlaw did really well. I mean, to start the game off, to get pressure on a quarterback, to force an in-air throw, uh, Kinlaw was – he played with great pad level. I think he was – he's doing a really good job inside, you know, and, and he played well for us. And, you know, Kinlaw is another guy who will continue to get better as he continues to play. So I'm uh, happy with where he is. He did a good job for us on Sunday. How noticeable is the difference? I mean, he obviously was dealing with that knee thing for so long, but not having it and kind of being healthy. Could you notice a, a, a big difference? Yeah, I mean, you notice a huge difference in just how he move, how he's moving around. Just you know, his demeanor. He's in a really great space, and uh, he's he's playing well for us, and he's moving around well. He's not worried about injury. Anytime you can, you know, get some stuff off your plate mentally, you're not worried about injuries. You're not worried about rehabbing. Now you have time to focus on really getting better as a player. And that's where Ken Law is. He, his focus is in the right place, and you see his game improving each week. The game start dealing, it seemed like he got more one-on-ones early. He was pretty effective. And did you know, it seemed like they started double-teaming him more. Who was it? Say they got missed. Uh, uh, I mean, being an interior guy, sometimes the way they slide to you, right, the way they're sliding their fr sliding the line, sometimes he's just in that position where he's going to be double based on the protection that the offense has given us. Uh, but, you know, it, it, again, he's doing, a, he's doing what we ask him to do, and he's, he's really affecting the game. He's helping us. He's being disruptive inside, and he's being the player that we thought he could be. So Frustrating on the defensive penalties considering they were an issue last year and Defense is just so elite when it's not making those mistakes. Yeah, you don't want penalties. That's it. You got to play smarter, right? We we can – the thing about those penalties are they're self-inflicted, right? Self-inflicted penalties will kill you. So we have to do a better job of just playing smarter, continue with the same relentless effort, the mindset. But we just have to play smarter on a few of those penalties where you guys saw it. I mean, they went down and scored on us on the, the three times we stopped them on third down and we allowed drives to continue to go on. You can't – Guys in this league are too good. You can't continue to give good players opportunities to make plays. So once we have guys down, we have to finish it. You were a guy who went through training camp where you were doing two days during camp and playing in all the preseason games. 
Do you think that maybe guys not playing in all the preseason games, I know you're trying to, it's part of the, the agreement, but do you think that affects their chemistry right off in week one? I think every guy is kind of, every guy is different. I think some guys can really handle not playing in preseason. But I think for the most part, a lot of guys do need preseason to just, you know, get that first hit out of the way, get that, that maybe it's a lot of guys that first time going on the ground and their first action. So for a lot of guys, I think younger guys, they do need that time. They need to see just a few reps in preseason just to knock out some cobwebs or guys who play for a while, guys who are veterans and have done it at a high level. Those guys can get by with it just because they're, they got a ton more reps of these than younger guys. So they can get by with, you know, missing a preseason. But I think it's something to, you know, getting a few reps and, Every guy is different. I don't think it's a team by team, but every guy, each individual is different when it comes to preseason. Some guys need it, some guys don't. Some guys just hit the ground rolling like they didn't miss a beat. Some guys, they come out and they're a little rusty. They're not tackling as Chris. They're not quite on it, right, where they should be communicating and things like that. But, you know, it's, it's always up to that individual. From a coach's perspective, after a loss like that, is it easier to – get your players' attention and drive a point home. I think don't have their attention, but you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I don't think as a coach, when, when we have the game there, it's not, it's not any room to get any attention. Guys already know. <laughs> they know that, you know, we were in position to finish and win the game. So guys know that, and they know what they have to do before. As a coach, I step in and say anything. The guys, they already know the mistakes that were made. They already know the corrections. They're just disappointed, right? We're all disappointed because we – feel like we can play much better than we play. And guys know that, and you don't have to harp on it for too long because we're dealing with professionals here, and they understand what we're here to do. Bo's got that third, Bo's got that third down sack, and then it just, he wasn't involved in many plays, obvious plays. Were they neutralizing him? Were they, I mean, there weren't that many pass rush opportunities, but from your perspective, how did he play after that? Yeah, Bosa did a great job. He did a good, really good job, you know, rushing the pad. There weren't many pass attempts, right? And the, the it was a slop, sloppy condition, so a lot of a lot of run game that we saw. So that kind of, you know, depending on which side they're running to, it kind of, you know, takes them out of the game. But he did a good job, good effort. He was atta attacking the ball. He was playing the right style. Like, he did a really good job for us. But it was just, you know, really tough conditions for everyone out there. So. When it, when it is, when you are in those conditions, it's just hard to, to get the proper footing to go rush the passer. Guys are not dropping back as much, so you won't have as many opportunities. You had one rookie out there uh, who played a lot of snaps, Womack. How did he do in his first real NFL game? I thought Womack, he did some good things in, a, in his first game, but uh, he also has a ways to go. He has to continue to play better for us. I thought he was he was okay in his first game, but he's been grinding and working him to continue to up his level of play, and he's going he's gonna to do a good job for us. Was he, I don't want to say at fault, but what, what, I guess what happened on the, the Dante Pettis touchdown? Uh, it was just a breakdown in coverage. I think you're playing uh, – when you play a quarterback like Justin Fields, a quarterback who's going to scramble and move around in the pocket, we all knew that. But one thing you can't do is the quarterback hasn't crossed the line of scrimmage. We had, we can't have everyone running down to get the quarterback if he's not past the line of scrimmage. So it's just one of those plays that, you know, he got out of the pocket, guys got antsy in coverage, and guys just, you know, just undisciplined from a standpoint of trying to go get the quarterback too quickly, right? And uh, they he found one, and that was a it was a great play by him to be able to you know throw that ball back across field and make a play like that. You know, it was a good play by Justin Fields. You always expect your guys to play well and keep it clean in every game, but do you kind of attribute it just to being week one as part of kind of getting back into it? I I don't <laughs> I don't I think you know we've had a lot of reps of training camp, we've had preseason games, so. I don't attribute it to it being week one. I think week one, you should come out, and the focus has always been on your, your fundamentals and technique. That's the things you have to rely on in week one. And we did that for the most part. Our guys, they played their butts off for the most part. They, they played outstanding. We just had a, a few breakdowns with the penalties that we can clean up, and we just got to go get the ball more. I think it was great for Huff uh, getting the one interception. But my challenge to our guys is can we get more? Can we get more? Can we get more? So if we continue to play like we played on Sunday, play smarter, and continue to attack the ball, like everyone's going to be happy with the results on Sunday. All right.
Thank you.